Okay, it's Wednesday night, Pine Drive Baptist Church prayer meeting, and it's good to have all of you online tonight. Um, and I'm not sure how many we have, but um, it's just good to have as many as we can. It's good to have Jacob and, and Usha uh, tonight for sure, and uh, Mary Ellen from up there in Michigan. So it's just good to be here. In fact, I, I just walked in uh, from a um, from uh, a doctor's appointment today with Pat, and it was downtown on Fain, and and um, and I told Ellen before I started here, I said I'm going to write a book on my experiences this afternoon. Nobody would believe it, so I guess it's no use to write it. But uh, anyhow, let's take a look at Second uh, Kings chapter six, verse one through seven. I titled the message "How to Recover." the cutting edge. And I want to lead us in a prayer, then I'm going to go ahead and read that and uh, and talk to us a little bit about it. It's one of my favorite passages that I uh, uh, I think about or I go back to uh, from time to time in, in, in my walk with the Lord. And, uh, and it's a very familiar passage. So let me pray and then I'll read it. Lord, our heavenly Father God, Lord, it's good, truly good to to be in your presence tonight is truly good to come into this prayer meeting all the way from Michigan to to wherever Lord we are in our homes tonight meeting to come in and, and just to to relax just to pause and and seek you tonight Lord and Father that's really what prayer is about it's about seeking you and so, Father, we do that tonight. We seek you. And first, we'll seek it through your word, a very familiar story that you have told in, in the scripture, in the Old Testament, Lord. And, Father, I pray that you take that and all these thousands of years later, just speak to us again tonight, right where we are, Lord, because that's really truly the only place you can speak to us, right where we are. But you know where we are in our spiritual journey, our spiritual life, you know our desire to love you and and to be more and more like you. So, Father, speak to us. And then, Father, as we come before you tonight to lift others up, Lord, who are, many of them are in deep need of prayer. And there's probably some that are not on our list tonight, but have no relationship with you, but they're in our hearts. They're they're in our thoughts. We, we live with them. We work with them. We, um, we communicate with them, Lord, whatever it may be. So we want to lift those up to you tonight as well. Lord. Father, so, Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for being here and also being there. Be there up there in that third heaven. And we just give you all praise and honor and glory for what you're about to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let me go ahead and take a look at, uh, at, at this very familiar story in Second Kings chapter 6. And this is really a, a school of prophets here. And, and they've grown to the point where they, they need a, a new dorm, if you will, putting it in, in that context. And, and so in the process, they cut down trees uh, to build a new house. And, and one of the prophets loses his axe head uh, and, and he becomes uh, distraught. And, and because... The problem was is that this axe head, head was borrowed. Did you ever borrow something from somebody? Told him you give it right back to him, and it broke. Well, he and and so he cries out to Elijah, the great prophet, performs a miracle, and and as we know, the head floats to the surface, and and the man put it out his hands, and he takes it. So let me read this with that that uh, short context there. <clears throat> And the writer says, now the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, see the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan and each of us get there a log and let us make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, he said, go. And then one of them said, be pleased to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, my master, it was borrowed. Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? 
And when he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and he threw it in there and made the iron float. And he said, take it up. So he reached out his hand and he took it. Heavenly Father, speak to us tonight. And lift us up wherever we are. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, this poor guy lost uh, his uh, axe head. And, and it, it is something to note is that he was engaged in great work. Don't miss that. He was engaged in great work when he lost this axe head. Secondly, he was busy doing the work that, that he was responsible to do. And, and then uh, uh, he, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't uh, resting. He wasn't doing anything, but he was just hard at work chopping his tree down or whatever. And then uh, he also, then he consequently lost uh, the axe head. And so what happened then? Well, he was unable to continue to, to, to do his work. So in other words, he lost the title of this message. He lost the cutting edge. He lost the thing that allowed him to do the work. And, and, and it was, it was a, a good work. It was a responsible work. And sometimes we lose some things that, that I would classify as the cutting edge. We're not as sharp, perhaps, as, as we once were, or we're not as sharp as God wants us to be, or we're not as sharp. Uh, in, in from a spiritual standpoint on on, on uh, uh, filling our hearts with the word of God or praying to God or or whatever the case may be. So you see this sharp biting power uh, of this axe head represents the power um, that we use to get the job done. And, and I think that's huge without our cutting edge. And what's our cutting edge? The cutting edge is the power of the Holy Spirit. And so without the cutting edge of the power of the Holy Spirit, we're able, we are never able to serve the Lord in the context or in the way or for the purpose that God wants us to do. Uh, nor nor do, we ever, do we ever satisfy that hunger or that discomfort or, or whatever may be in us, that hunger to be better. And I believe every one of us has a hunger to be better, to be more Christ-like, if you will than we are today. I have that hunger. I have that deep hunger. I share that with you so often. A deep hunger to finish um, finish the race. In fact, one of my favorite verses and <clears throat> one of my favorite verses that, that I go to quite frequently uh, is from Acts chapter 20, verse 24. You don't have to turn there. I just, just thought about this as I was sharing this with you. But in, in Acts chapter uh, 20, verse 24, uh, Luke says this, but I do not count my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus. And what is that ministry? To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And, and so I don't consider, uh, I don't count my life as any value, nor nor is it is it um, that precious to me as long as it, God is going to allow me with whatever time I have left to serve him and, and, and to preach to him. And, and every one of us, he's not just talking about a preacher, he's talking about all of us, that we can finish this course. And so um, the result of no power that, 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 that many Christians um, are experiencing today in their spiritual walk in this call to ministry, uh, the, the lack of spiritual power in churches in the lives of saints. Um, is there anything that can be done about that? And we all know that, that there are. Uh, we know that this is happening in many churches, many denominations, that there's just not that power. Not saying they don't have the Holy Spirit. We all have the Holy Spirit as brothers and sisters or as Christians. But there is a thing about having the Holy Spirit, and then there's another thing about having the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and one of the problems, I believe, is that too many Christians are so good at what they do. They're so good at what they do, yet they're living in the power of the flesh. And, and, and no one notices. Some of them, they're, they're so good. They're so gifted. They've been doing it so long. But they, they don't... 
sometimes they don't realize that, that God's not present. God's not empowering them uh, to do what he has called them to do. We're, in other words, we're doing it in the flesh. And, and this is why, the, why I titled this passage, How, how Do You Recover? <laughs> Excuse me, the, the cutting edge. What was some three or four valuable lessons that, that I just want to look at, just run by you, uh, so to speak, for you to think about. When we're talking about recovering our cutting edge, <laughs> in other words, if it's, if, if it's more energy, if it's more, um, if, if it's more discipline, wh whatever that is, or the, the cutting edge that God wants us to have, that sharp edge, just like the living word of God, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's sharpened on both sides or, or on, on both blades there. So number one, recovering the, the cutting edge, uh, I think it involves concern it, it involves concern uh look at verse five again he said but as one <clears throat> was felling the log his axe head fell off into the water and he cried out he was concerned because he lost this cutting edge and and, and as soon as a man feels the axe head fly off he cries out in despair why did he do that because he knew he lost the power to continue the work that he was hired or that he was called, whatever the case may be to do. So the first step, when we feel that we're losing the cutting edge in some way, we're not as close to God as, as, as we thought we were. We don't feel close to God. We're not spending the time that we, we normally or would spend at, at some point in time in the word of God and in prayer. And, and so <laughs> it, the first step is recovering this power. Be concerned about it and, and, and ask the Holy Spirit um, to, to give you that power back. Well, you know, one of the things that, that we have to think about is we know we don't have the power of the Spirit. There are times when we, don't, when we know we do not have the power of the Spirit. I, I, just, I just know it. it's not that I don't feel it. I just know I don't have that power that that i pray for fill me with the the um with the uh, the refreshment fill me with the fire of the word of god fill me with the fire to talk about jesus christ with with people who are hurting and and uh, i'm convinced that <coughs> excuse me there are many that walk through life who have lost the power of the holy spirit and and this is the key they don't even know it they don't know that they're operating again, as I said earlier, under their own power and not the power of the Holy Spirit. They're trying to live for God. They're really trying to live for God. And they don't realize, <coughs> excuse me, he's nowhere around. He, he's not there. I mean, he's there, obviously, because he's God. But he's not there. He's not there in your work. He's not there in in your ministry or in my ministry. And the condition, that's the condition I think of, of many uh, of our modern churches today, uh, condition of many church uh, people today, condition of, of many revivals today. Uh, I, I want you to turn real quickly here to Revelation chapter three. I know Mark's going through this. He's, he's been through this part of it, I'm sure. Revelation chapter three. And, and take a look, uh, beginning in verse 14. I know he's been through this. But it, it says, uh, to the church in Laodicea, and to the angel of the church in Laodicea, write. Well, this is God telling John, write this. The words of the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich. I have prospered. I need nothing. Not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and, and, and naked. In verse 18, he said, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich. And white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen. And salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. 
those whom I love, I reprove. That's such an important uh, um, truth there. Be, um, those I love, whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Again, you, you know, he's talking about the church of, of Laodicea here. Uh, it, it is, how different is that from, from some of the churches that we read about? Some of the stories that we read about in, in the news and, and online and even Christian publications of what's happening to God's church today. And, and so we need to be concerned. They need to be concerned. They who make up these churches who, who call people who are not called by God or, 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 or say they're called by God, but they're not preaching the word of God. And they're, in fact, they're preaching like the false prophets back in Laodicea and the other churches there. They're preaching a false doctrine. They're preaching a false God. So we need to be concerned. And, and, and when that happens to us, when we feel that we're losing that cutting edge, we need to search our hearts. Allow God to search our hearts. Allow God to search our lives and, and show us what he is doing in us. And is it of, is it of me or is it, is it of the spirit? Friend, we're talking about God not only shows up, but, but when he shows up, he'll show us out. He'll show us where we are. So it involves concern. Secondly, it involves confession. The, the man confessed, not only did he lose his cutting edge, why did he lose it? Well, there's indications that he, that he didn't bother to tighten it when he began his work, or maybe it was tightened. He didn't check it as he was doing his work. But after he discovered the lack of something, uh, after we discover the lack of something in our life, uh, a relationship, a, a power crisis, uh, uh, again, not feeling that, that, uh, that intimacy with Christ, or, or maybe, maybe we're sensing that our prayers are not being answered, not because they're not heard, but, but, but there, there's something that's causing this interference between our communication and and the recipient in God. So we, in other words, we have to come to the place where we have to admit to Christ what we're lacking. Admit to Christ, because he already knows it. Tell him what we're lacking. And, and, and you know, according to scripture, it's, it's wise sometimes, but, but, but be in prayer about this before you do it. It's, it's wise sometimes to share with each other, to share with someone, a confidant or, or a prayer partner or, or someone that you're close to that's not a, you know, they're not familiar with what you may be going through, but you share it with them. And that's, I believe that's one of the hardest things to do, at least it is for me. You know, don't you want everybody to think that uh, you're a top, you're on top of that mountain. Um, you, you don't need encouragement, you know, because everything's good. Well, you know what I've said the last couple of weeks, we're all fine externally. But internally, we're not all fine. Sometimes there's, there's things that we need to share. And, and we need to, to, to give honest cries to Christ, honest cries to Abba, our Father. Uh, with, with what we're going through. I, I just don't have the fire. You know, tell the Lord, I just don't have the fire that I used to have. Or I'm not as close to you, Jesus, as I used to be. Or I need the power of God operating through me until the job is done. Hence that verse that I, that I shared with you from, from Acts. I want to finish the course. And it doesn't matter about me. It's all about God. And, and that's, that is where our focus is to be on God. It's about heaven. It's not about the, the, all the things that are going here. Our focus is on him. And Paul says that he's working in all of our circumstances, no matter what you're going through or when you go through it, no matter, God says, I do work in those circumstances. And again, he already knows, well, um, if he already knows, then, then why do we need to do that? Because he wants us to know. 
He wants us to know that the flame has gone down a little. He wants us to know that there's something that we need to search our hearts for. And, and when we do that, we've got the Holy Spirit living in there that is going to reveal uh, that to our hearts, if, if, in fact, we're listening. So we come to the place where we honestly admit, it, God, I can't do this on my own. But God, you can. And you will, because this is right out of scripture. You tell us to give it to you. And, and then not to take it back, but to give it to you. Third way, uh, you know, not only is recovering the cutting edge involved concern, you know, and sometimes we, I don't like to use this word anxiety because anxiety, according to scripture, is sin. Worry is sin, but uh, sometimes, and, and and sometimes we say, well, I'm not, wor I, I, I'm not worrying, uh, you know, I'm just concerned. Well, we need to involve, we need to be concerned when there's something wrong, because that means there's something wrong inside of us. And then we need to confess it. Search my heart, oh God, and and then confess it, with what that is. And thirdly, I think it involves um, comprehension, comprehension, understanding. One of the reasons uh, that he was so upset, I believe, because he lost that, <coughs> excuse me, lost that ax head. I think one of the reasons is um, it didn't belong to him. And I know I said this at the beginning, when, when I borrow something and I, and I break it or I lose it, you know, if I break it, I can replace it. But if I lose it, well, I lose it, I can replace it too. But the guy entrusted it to me <clears throat> when I asked to, to borrow it. So one of the reasons he's so upset is because this axe head was borrowed. And he's losing his accent, and that's a big deal to him. Maybe in our day and age, it's not a big deal. I'll just get on Amazon, and I'll get another replacement. I was out doing some stuff in the pond yesterday, and uh, and and Patty had this really nice uh, pressure, <coughs> excuse me, uh, attachment to the hose. Well, I broke it. Well, I just got on Amazon, ordered another one. And it's going to be here tomorrow. He couldn't do that. It affected his work. It, it affected what people thought of him. And, and so losing that axe was a big deal. Losing our cutting edge with God is a big deal to him. May not be to some of us, but it is a big deal to him. In fact, the person that lent the tool uh, to this man was a sign that the owner trusted him. Okay, I'm going to loan it to you to cut that tree down because I trust you. I trust that you will take care with what I have given you. Isn't that what God does for us? When he gives us a blessing or when we ask him for something, uh, when we seek something to do the ministry or the work that he's called us to do and he gives it to us, doesn't it hurt you? I mean, really hurt you when you realize that you didn't take care? You know, I'm holding right here the word of God. God gave this to us. He gave this to us to encourage us. He gave this to us to lead us down that path, that very narrow path that he wants us to, to, to travel through this life. He, he gave us this so that when we stumble, when we fall, when Satan hits us, when it starts, whatever it may be, that we can go here and, and we can search out his word. And he says there's a promise in here. I'll tell you how we're going to do this. So it is the living word. And, and so when we lose this cutting edge and we don't understand uh, that, that God has, has given us things that, that he wants us to take care of, good stewards. We use that, that phrase, good stewards. We're to be good stewards. Well, it's not just good stewards of our money. It's good stewards of our time. It's good stewards of those things that you entrust me with as your pastor. I've got a responsibility to take care, uh, to take uh, responsibility for the trust that, that you put in me. What does that mean? It means I have to study. It means I have to do the very best, my utmost for his highest. I just love Oswald Chambers, my utmost for his highest for, for what? For his glory. 
And so the Lord, the, this man didn't want to violate this guy's trust that that bar that owned him the the axe head. He didn't want to do that. He 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 obviously respected this man because he went to him and asked him to help him out on this. Loan me this. Well, when we're working for the Lord, listen to me, we're operating on borrowed power. And, and I just think that is so huge. When we're working for the Lord, no matter what your mission is for the Lord, what your purpose is for, we're, we're working for him on borrowed power, the power that he gives to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. The power to serve the Lord comes from the Lord. Lord, I want to serve you. <clears throat> I, I'm dry. I, well, ask me for my power. That's one of the reasons that, that the Holy Spirit's living in you. So listen, he has entrusted, God has entrusted his power to us. He says, I give it to you. You've got the power of Almighty God. We know that in Scripture. He's living inside of you. The Holy Spirit is living inside. You've got godly power living inside of you. Listen up. God will freely give his power to everyone who seeks it. I seek it every day. I, I seek it before I, I, I leave the house, most days. I seek it before I preach. Fill me in the power, in the fire. I want to be on fire for your word, Lord. I, I want people to be on fire. And I want them to be encouraged. I want your word to go out and touch people where they are. And if there's something, if there is something that is prevent, preventing that power from being in me, then it's my responsibility because God's already said the power is there. Why don't you? access that power and that's the same for all of us he says seek and you will find ask and it shall be done unto you these aren't just uh, nice uh, scripture passages that, that's good to memorize and and so well, god we, we ask for it and i haven't gotten it yet well we all know uh, the um the text behind that you know wait patience you've asked me for it you're going to get an answer from me. So it involves concern and it involves confession, getting this cutting edge back. It involves comprehension, understanding what God is doing, understanding where this cutting edge came from in the first place. It came from God. He's the one that, that sharpened us and he's the one that sharpens us again. And then the last thing I would say that it involves is, is again, look at verse six. Oh, um, Wait a minute. Let me get back to my text here. Verse, uh, verse six, he says, For the Lord had made the army of the... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wrong verse. Wrong chapter. Verse six. Then the man said to, uh, of God said, where did it fall? And when he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. And he said, take it up. So he took an act. He, he did what God commanded. He took a, an effort and he reached out his hand and he took it. You know, we can, re we can recover God's power. We can recover this, this cutting edge. Um, in our lives daily, maybe even hour by hour, depending on our relationship with God and, and where our focus is. But how do you recover this? When I say coming back, go back to the place where you lost the power. Can't, can't you, if you're ever in this circumstance or you may be now, where, where did I lose this power? I was so close to you. God, everything was just falling into place. It just seemed like you were answering prayer after prayer after prayer. And, and then, God, it just seems like I, I just don't have that same feeling. Things have taken my mind off of you or, or, or life has taken my, 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 my focus and my priorities. My priorities got out of skew. So return to the place where you lost the power. And then secondly, uncover the reason. Ask God, uncover the reason why the power has been lost. 
maybe it has been forfeited. How do you forfeit the power for what I just mentioned? You get caught up with your calendar. You get caught up with all the pressures that are upon you. And I'm not putting those pressures down. We all have pressures. Some of you that are on here tonight have pressures that, um, that others can't conceive. But God handles pressures. I, I told, uh, told a driver that was driving us to, to an appointment in, from the rehab center to, to the doctor's office today. Um, I told her, she was complaining. I said, you know, we all have pressures. We all have things that we're going through. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Uh, and and so we we had a communication. Pat was in the back, strapped in in the ambulance in her wheelchair, and uh, she said, "God's got a purpose for you." <laughs> I said that was really nice, Pat. And so I just was quiet, and Pat began to tell this woman who was having great difficulty with her son, who was about to graduate from college, but uh, from high school. But anyhow. Uh, it's it, it, go back to the place where you feel that you have lost that power, that that communication with Jesus Christ, and under and uncover the reason. It, it could be some sin committed. Again, that's what Psalm one thirty nine is talking about. Search me, O oh God, search my heart. You know, um, there there's there's things in our heart that we aren't even aware of that but God is because the heart is is very deep it's it's not a surface type thing you know um maybe maybe we've lost the cutting edge because we're trusting again in ourselves we're trusting in the fight well I can do this Lord I, I can do this you know I've done this before and I'm just going to do it again and if we're honest we're all point pinpoint areas in our lives uh, that's that that stand or stood between us and God. And let me rephrase that. It stood between us and the power of God. God was still there. God was still waiting. God is still waiting. If this fits into any in any sense to what you may be experiencing tonight, uh, you know, God's still there, but He's just waiting for us to to seek that power from Him. We need to go back to the point where we wander off course. How do we wander off course? And that's easy to do sometimes. And you know what's going to happen when we come back and we confess to God and, and, and we, we cry out to God as, as this man did? The glory is going to return. The power is going to return to your life and, and it's going to return to my life. When we come to the place where we want Christ, God gives us that power back to us. When we take the time to be alone with God, and it doesn't have to be for an hour, it can be for a few moments based on your schedule, based on the time you have, but you're just alone with God. Nobody else. You're just alone there. Well, God is there with you. And I just want to tell you, God, um, God will let you know that you may have only had five minutes while somebody else may have pr uh, prayed for two hours, but you got even greater results because you trusted God, because you asked him for that fire. When you get up in the morning, ask the Holy Spirit. I know, you know, preachers always say, well, you get up in the morning, do this, do that, and that. Well, if, if we did everything that, that preachers tell you to do before you get out of bed, you'd never get out of bed. But but sometime between the time you get get awake in the morning and you walk out that door, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with his power, with his wisdom, with his discernment, with his protection, with his eyes, with his ears, with his, with, with his hands and, and his feet for whoever he brings you or whatever ministry he gives to you that day. And, and, and God will do that. And when we do, it brings glory to God. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we are in a day and an age where the pressures continue to mount. The Lord, you're the same God. It's the same scripture. The book is closed. There's no more, no more chapters, no more 
letters to be included in the Bible were they're all there for us. And one of them that you not only emphasize, but you command is to pray, to ask. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. And so Lord, help us. Satan does not want us to have this cutting edge. Satan wants us to be comfortable. But God, some have lost their first love. And God, we don't want to lose anything that you have entrusted, any of the blessings that you have poured down upon us. Certainly, God, we don't want to, um, we don't lose the power of prayer. Power of prayer that, that is sharpened and goes directly to the throne of grace when, when we're right with you, God. And so, Lord, wherever we are tonight, just refresh us once again. Speak to us once again so that we can come before the throne of grace. In some cases, with people that, that really can't talk to you right now, Lord, for, for whatever reason, they're just you. And their focus is on that illness, Lord. So thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Fill us all with the power of the Holy Spirit to pray tonight, to come before you, the throne of grace. And we pray these things in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen.